Welcome to the Kryptonite Podcast. My name is Mark Stores, and hang out with me as always is Rob Morphy. Robert, thank you so much, and I am Chris. Thank you so very much for joining us, Robert and Christopher. We're back. Yeah, we are. Doing and it it's like we are every week. Yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> not every week. <laughs> Sometimes. sometimes we're yeah, off. Sometimes yes. I'm not here. No, sometimes Chris isn't here. Sometimes we're all off. Who I think yeah. I don't think it uh it's a bad thing to celebrate when the three of us are here in studio hanging out. Yeah, yeah. no, it's doing a pod good. together. Yep. Yeah, we're making it happen. Absolutely. Plus, it's fucking October by the time this comes out anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's it. on the cusp of it right now. It's officially spooky season. Oh, hundred percent. So our last pod probably will was that come out in the end of September? I don't, uh, I don't. I can't math. That came out today, which is September 30th, which is International Podcast Day. Good Hot sir. diggity damn. Oh, yeah. we, do, we, do we get something? Yeah. What, who I gives don't, us what? Well, we had um, T Public that gave us a flash sale at our- <laughs> at Oh, our, yeah, they did. At our merch shop there at hellerspace.com. They're like, hey, by the way, to celebrate International Podcast Day, here's a flash sale. I was like- Cool. Do we get a cake? Do we get? Yeah. <laughs> like, what do we get? Like I know I'm a trophy. Do know. we get a golden tea? Oh yeah, oh. a little golden microphone. <gasps> because we make them money. More we make them more money than we get from them. Yeah. I oh, know. Oh, whatever. <laughs> he made that whatever. Money. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna say this. T Public has recently stepped their game up. We yeah, got, no, they have. No, we have a new rap Violet who's awesome. She's been so good to us. She's so cool. The printing has gotten a lot better. Yeah. And yeah. We yep. recently added three designs that were exclusive to Crowdmade over at CryptonautMerch.com. We've got the the anime Heller Space shirt yeah. that you did. Yeah, love that one. And then we have two designs from Mr. Todd Purse, the Venezuelan mm-hmm. uh, Littlefoots, which and I love. the Loveland Frog. The, yeah, uh, which are both OG amazing. Loveland yeah, Frog. Of course, he's a yeah. fan, fan fucking tastic artist. No, yep. dude, it's amazing. So those three designs have been moved over to T Public because, you know, COVID kind of hit them hard. Sure. Uh, you know, workforce wise, but now they're back at it. They're doing it. So happy International Podcast Day! I yeah. guess I'm we're, gonna, we're podcasting on International Podcast yeah. Day. We're that's, podcasting than a podcast. Right. That's why I decided to drink this pod. Ordinarily, I wouldn't. Oh, is that your reason for celebration? Yeah. Okay, that's right. fine. That's fine. You know As what? I just found out, working on my uh, second tumbler of bourbon. Uh, happy International Podcast Day, everybody! <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, man, we got something fun this week. I was not expecting this whatsoever. I thought we were going to do something totally different. But Rob, he's got a bag of tricks over there. Mm-hmm. He's pulling them out. A magician, if you will. The old switcheroo. The old, oh, yeah, no one expects that. Nope. Oh, damn. This week we're talking about TV terrors, lurkers. In the airway, troublesome lot they Ooh. are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> bad influence. The documentary Poltergeist taught us anything. Oh uh, yes, and ah. it truly is. And that does get brought up. Okay, it has right. to briefly. Granted, 100%. in no fact, there's going to be a lot of uh, pop cultural ephemera in this, and right. that's just fine. Yes. I just, I'm excited to hear. I'm excited to check this out. Let's get started with a familiar fixture in nearly every room of the modern house. Television has forever changed the way we interact with each other and the world around us. But as profound and arguably negative as these alterations have been, they pale before the truly terrifying interactions that some claim to have had with an array of undeniably dangerous and utterly enigmatic entities who, as unbelievable as it may seem, are said to occupy the airwaves inside the so-called idiot box. Mm-hmm. Ooh, the idiot box. Man, yeah. dude. That was one of the hardest readings I've ever done. And I hope everyone on the ten dollar tier sees the crescendo yeah. that I'm the, composing the, as I do. It, no, you I built like this. You built yeah. to a climax. Yeah. I do that all the time. Like I used to be really self like I know speech givers, people that aren't watching no, the video yeah, don't know. Watch a TED talk, dude. But, everyone's yeah, everyone doing does things. that. Yeah. But that just sort of came naturally. Eventually I found I can't do the rhythm unless I'm doing doing the fucking hand conducting. I, so fuck it. I just do it now. I don't know why the hands help me, it, but they, it, yeah. just, they help like me a keep the pace. metronomic yeah, yeah. rhythm or something. When I do the better help ad reads, I do the same thing, and my kids will watch me do it, and they're like, what is wrong with you? Oh, my God. I'm like, Dad is trying to make money for the podcast by doing better help ad <laughs> right. reads. Dad okay? has Tourette's. Dad's giving you a roof over your head. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You better goddamn think better help. <laughs> All right, man. Well, here we are. We're doing it. Let's, uh, let's dive in. Absitronically. 
From the mid-20th century on, television has been a near-ubiquitous presence in all of our lives, serving as everything from a babysitter and boredom killer to a ritualistic source of entertainment, especially in those long bygone days of pre-scheduled programming. We all remember those. Yep. It is a medium like no other before, including the game changer that was radio, that binds us together as a culture. Beaming the tragedies and triumphs, the idiosyncrasies and idiocies, the fads, fables, and fantasies we all share directly into our homes. For those of us of a certain age, the technology provided must-see TV every single sugar-saturated Saturday morning before network executives realized the ridiculous revenue they could generate by offering kids shows all day and night, thus rendering those precious few hours effectively moot. But boy, I love Saturday yeah. mornings. Oh, I no, mean, those were we the all ones. Did. It's, a, it's a dead issue. It has been forever, right. but with, you know, 24 hours Unless you got up like too early and then you got to like the air raid thing yeah that was always weird yeah, that was a bummer and then you get like local <sighs> programming like saturday morning showboat and shit you, which was like you got some weird shit in the plywood in the and fucking yeah. I yeah. know, regrettable decisions it'd be like someone selling like here's some ducks that are knives and you're like son of a <laughs> bitch like I'm, yeah. I'm trying to watch the wwf cartoon like god damn it and it's like a half an hour away there you go yeah. We all we all learned to tell time by waiting for shit we didn't want to watch for shit we did want to watch. Yes. No, well, yeah, that's the deal. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was classic. I still want right. one of those knives, though. Oh, of course. While once upon a time, in the coveted prime time slot, multiple generations could be cajoled into congregating for supposedly family-friendly fare like the A-Team and Cheers or Seinfeld and Friends or fill in your fucking generational blank. Cinema fans also had reason to celebrate in the annual re-airing of classics like The Wizard of Oz or The Sound of Music, while insomniacs could savor cornball classics like Mars Needs Women and Zontar, The Things from Being the Things. Jesus Christ, it's just one thing. It's one thing. With multiple appendages. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, I like yeah, yeah. bat creatures. All right, no, I, I'm, I, I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. So thank you. Thank yeah. you. I'll, I'll get to it. The Thing from Venus, both, by the way, Larry Buchanan films. Oh, nice. Made for Azalea Pictures, shot on 16 millimeter in Texas. Mm. He was hired by Samuel Z. Arkoff of AIP to remake earlier Roger Corman films on the cheap so they could release them directly to TV because the earlier films were in black and white and TV in the 60s only wanted to buy color. So he made even more cheap Jack oh, cult okay. films from earlier cheap Jack cult films resulting in Zontar, The Thing and or Things from Venus and Mars Needs Women and a few others. Yeah. How do you retain all this? Oh, dude, I have all the biographies. I love it. All the bad yep. filmmakers. Fucking love it. Second only to cryptozoology and ufology. Fail. Bad movies are my bag. My bag. Fucking all love right. it. So... This would leave people, I, I digressed a little too far for my own good, waking up wondering if what they'd seen was a real movie or just a fever dream. Many times, especially when we're young enough that suspension of disbelief is a standard default setting, the first frightening images we saw on TV stayed with us for life. For me, these consisted of any number of truly terrifying made-for-TV movies like 1973's Goblin-Infested Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, which I think was remade about 15 years ago. Not as good, but whatever. The dead daughter antics of Don't Go to Sleep particularly terrified me, and the monster-filled mayhem of Gargoyles. Yes. Always a classic. Love it. Trauma-inducing nods must also go to the final segments of the now-legendary Dan Curtis anthology's Trilogy of Terror, featuring a screeching razor-toothed nightmare in the form of a frenetic and homicidal Zuni fetish doll. I know we've talked about that. Uh, yeah. Oh, totally, yeah. Spear-wielding yep. nightmare. Yep. And the paralyzingly horrid Undead Demon Kid from 1977's Dead of Night. That shit fucking scarred me for life. <clears throat> the list goes on and on. For most of us, these early indelible images of fear first haunted us in the form of seemingly inescapable nightmares, but all but inevitably, these unrelenting horrors reformed themselves into priceless memories tempered by the warm glow of nostalgia, and the things that once so terrified us became like old friends. But there are an unlucky few whose experiences with terror on the tube are far more visceral and intimate. These individuals have not just seen, but allegedly interacted with bizarre beings who they claim are piggybacking on the invisible waves that constantly surround us. These creatures are 
a seemingly conniving contingent of an insidious force that, by all indications, harbors a distinct animosity toward the human race. It's terrifying to think that we are constantly being pummeled by unseen things in the ether that wish to do us harm and are constantly striving to find outlet through one of our society's most universal technologies. Things that, in most circumstances, we can neither see, hear, touch, or smell. I wouldn't recommend trying to taste them. Yet, that seems to be the case. We are surrounded by fuckles. And I know I always use the from beyond analogy. The okay. Lovecraftian well, yeah. nightmare <laughs> yeah. of what could be swimming around that yeah. is not aware of us and we're not aware of them. Right. But then when you turn on the fucking machine, all of a sudden you see these fucking like Vaseline covered sky eels and they're trying to eat your yeah, face. Right. That's You're not the deal. good, dude. Bad, bad times. But again, we don't know how this works and we're going to cover all sorts of branches. But what if there are just things that are aware of us and we're not aware of them? And they are trying to use the technology we've developed for our own edification, entertainment, I guess, education at times, if you're PBS, fucking, to come at us, bro. I mean, especially oh, now in an age I mean, of streaming. Yeah. My God, they have so many options. They can get you through Peacock, Paramount Plus, Tubi, AMC Plus. I recently got YouTube TV. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean. Just got sick of commercials, huh? Discovery If they Plus. were smart, they would be using just your phones. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I mean, it, half of the, the kids are on the phones watching that stuff. Yeah. I don't know how many people you want. I feel like in a generation, not to digress, but there's going to be like no TVs. You know what I mean? mean? Like once a certain generation dies, I feel like. Yeah, no, I mean, with the way that kids consume consume social media on their phones. The way way that they interact, like our TikTok, check it out, Kryptonite Podcast, plugging it. I mean, we could get crazy views over there. It's insane. The thing I think that's going to stop that from happening, though, I do agree, um, will will be that obviously people will want the entertainment constantly and and the constant interaction that comes with smartphones. But I think there will still be a place in their day at the end of it, whenever they're just chilling out, hanging out, fucking with their friends, with themselves, with their loved ones, where they just are going to want to see it amplified larger than life. And TV technology has gotten so big and high quality. No, yeah, it has. That I think eventually, eventually I don't think, I mean, obviously TV is already not used the way we did. And we're going to talk about that in a second. No, no, I think it's, yeah, there's another shift, I think. But yeah. Yeah. Once Gen X is gone, maybe millennials. Yeah, millennials still use like my sisters. I mean, but like once their kids grow up, I'm like, there might be one TV in a house, but everyone else is just going to be on a phone. Sure. And yeah. they'll be arguing about who gets to like send their signal and then they watch right. the universal big screen, whatever the fuck they call it. I mean, probably the universal big screen. That makes more sense than TV. <laughs> yeah. What's even better is being on my phone and then just casting it to my TV. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, boom. There yeah. you go. So it's already they, yeah. a done deal. They haven't nailed yeah. it yet. The quality isn't. It's supposed to be, mine's supposed to 1080. It does not project 1080. No, my phone does like 4K. Yeah, my, it'll my, do like 4K. Not, but I have, an, I have my iPhone going to an Apple TV. I digress too much. Technology. We all, well, that, yeah, that's different. But yeah. I think, no, that tech is going to be there. <clears throat> Every phone's going to be just a projector. Oh, you, yeah. you need a TV, and you're just yeah. going to fucking set it on a thing and just be like on your fucking wall. Sure. There you go. Yeah. I love it. And that's great, too. I mean, I would love to have the, all the archives of dumb shit I love in my pocket I just know, to be able to. But it's I know. Easy. Listen, we're old school, I I want hard TV. media no. collectors. I, we're, we're, I mean, you and I are the same, Chris. We're I know. fading away, I know. I know. You too, Mark. All right. So. Away. All right. We haven't gotten to the. I know, we just we digressed. Go. We're just sad and old. I want, I want you guys. <laughs> truly, we are. <laughs> we are sad and old. Um. To get ready for another digression. All right, here we go. Before we dive headfirst into this puddle of weird, let's take a moment to delve into one of our famous cryptonaut science chats that so delight our oh, listeners no. and infuriate anyone who actually knows anything about what it is we're attempting to fucking explain. Today's chapter, oh, no. TV reception. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. All right, kids, you ready? Right. Welcome to shit we don't know about corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know what? Keep your comments. But we're going to talk about it anyway. Keep your comments in the comment section. It's going to be quick, and all I right. and I got all this from the internet, so obviously completely vetted. Totally. <laughs> Once upon a time, people erected massive metallic antenna arrays on their rooftops in order to intercept the radio waves broadcast from local television stations and convert them via a tuner into video and audio signals that their television could comprehend. Simple, old school, basic shit. Yep, totally. Quality and viewing options were improved with the advent of cable, which, as its name suggests, transmitted those same waves, but instead of projecting them randomly into the ether for free... Providers installed hardline cables, both coaxial and fiber optic, directly to consumers' homes for increasingly exorbitant fees. 
Nowadays, for the most part, folks stream their programming from servers who, again for ever increasing fees, send content to their clients in a compressed packet of information over the, in, in, over the internet excuse me, to be decoded and watched whenever they choose. Or so I've read. I really don't fucking know. It could be the product of fairy dust and pixie oil or whatever the fuck. I'm yeah. just assuming that's how that shit works. But it, it's I guess it's cool to have shit on demand, though you've lost the collective being of shows. But no, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it's not just the method of receiving broadcasts that changed. Over the course of my longer than expected and somewhat less than esteemed life, I've seen TVs evolve from square screened, fat bodied, faux wood cabinets that weighed roughly a metric fuck ton and had no choice but to sit on the floor to only slightly smaller tube filled plastic units that could rest on reinforced and appropriately named TV stands to rectangular razor thin wall mounted 4K extravaganzas no thicker than the black velvet mounted string art clipper ship my mom made in the mid 70s and likely only weighing twice as much and yeah that fucker hung on the den wall for years mm. i'd about kill to have it now as a kid i'm like why why no, no yeah now i'm like oh my god it's just the you know <laughs> i want all of, of these yeah it's, everything from my yep. childhood that's awesome but for all these evolutions in technology and viewing habits one thing has remained as unchanging as the very very real moon in the sky above i'm talking to you mark and that is the fact that until very recently and with the exception of clearly fictional horror films like poltergeist in the ring tv reception is a one-way street we watch tv it does not watch us but perhaps something inside of it does and before we digress too much i know the technology is there and there's all sorts of shady shit i don't even want to think about it what alexa is doing to our private lives just let's for the, for the sake of this pod say tv doesn't watch us okay we know better even though we know that it does if i had written this I don't know, maybe 15, 20 years ago, it would have been valid. Okay. Yeah. No. So yeah. I get it is, and it's not any, it is nefarious, yeah. but it's not necessarily paranormal. Well, but maybe there's two things watching us terrestrial nefarious and paranormal um, perfidious. Okay. I, I lo- <laughs> there you go. It okay. lies. It lies to all of us. It True. lies. All right, cool. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> Just put a flag in that and accept that I wrote it. Exactly. <sighs> Our first case, now we're finally getting, now we're finally getting to the goods, <laughs> is one I encountered decades ago in some long forgotten library drawn compendium of ghost stories and other unexplained occurrences. Though the eerie incident is more intriguing than alarming, it's notable as it resulted in what is, at least for me, one of the most compelling paranormal photos on the books. I don't know if either of you guys ever came across this, but we'll find out in a second. And yes, I do have the accompanying photo. You can put it up where people can see it, you know, or, or use it as the image on Instagram, whatever you want to do, Mark. Yeah, I can actually put it. Um, if, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to be on Instagram and we're going to have it at kryptonotpodcast.com. So okay. if you go there, click, at the, click on the post, it'll be right there. Perfect. Excellent. Dope. The event in question began on Christmas Eve, 1968. But while the bulk of humanity tuned in to watch astronauts Jim Lovell, Bill Anders, and Frank Borman become the first human beings to orbit another celestial body on television, making the Apollo 8 Christmas at the Moon one of the most watched broadcasts in history, an unnamed couple in South Minnesota were busy with more pressing affairs. They were rushing to wrap the last batch of presents for their presumably slumbering children. Taking a brief break from the frenzy of wrapping paper and ribbons, the Minnesotan matriarch, oh boy, that's a tongue twister. I'm going to do that again. We're just going to keep it going. The Minnesotan matriarch sat down on the couch to watch her husband work. Behind him, in the corner of the room, the family's floor model television sat inert and unused. Though the reasons why were never explained, one can easily assume that in the haste of last-minute shopping and getting the kids to bed, thoughts of watching aeronautic history in the making were the furth- furthest excuse me, things from the overwhelmed parents' minds. And I can see that. You're rapping well, yeah. shit. It's cr- I mean, yeah, they're going around the moon. yippee ki We got shit to do. It's Minnesota. We all know about that, Rob. Sure. We all know about that alleged incident. I do. Yeah. Okay. Do, do not. This is not the time. Is this the time? Don't. You know what? I'm not going to talk about the Van Allen belt. Let's continue. All right. For... We all believe in the Van Allen belt, right? You're right. You're right. Yeah, let's continue. I mean, we do. All right, whatever. All right, you know what? Back, back on point. You motherfucker. Get in my mind. (laughs) Thanks, Chris. 
Wait till, <laughs> wait till you see how the videos we just did without you. How many oh, times no. we talk about you and the moon? fired so much. Yeah. Oh, no. You got fired. Right, every video fine. you got fired. All right. It's okay. It's for okay. a different reason. I'm going to talk to myself. Mark, that's a bad meeting. Yeah. We got to talk about Robert Chris. The Red Allen Bell. Yeah, that's right. They, fucking, they, they believe in that horse shit. Okay. Oh. Whatever. <laughs> they believe in that horse shit. The explanation. <laughs> yeah, Mark. Yeah. As the frazzled mom took a much-needed breather, she noticed a strange image begin to materialize on her black TV screen. Within seconds, she realized that, despite the fact that the television was not only off, but unfucking plugged oh, she boy. was looking oh, shit. at the evidently broadcast image of a large, likely masculine hand, palm outward, descending downward on the screen. So, in case anyone needs the image, just go So, just... Big hand going down. Okay, weird. Yeah. It is fucking weird. With the kind of quick thinking one can't help but to admire, especially me, the woman leapt up, grabbed a nearby camera, presumptively on hand to capture the soon-to-be rapturous glee of Christmas morn, and snapped off a single photo of the ghostly upside-down hand before it quickly faded away. Shit, good call. Yeah, absolutely. The mom was mystified as to what it was she just captured. Her husband, beavering away with the tape and scissors with his back to the TV, had, to her eternal chagrin, seen nothing of the offending appendage. And just like that, the incident was over. But what might have been little more than a curio in a Minnesota family's photo album had, by 1970, made its way into the public forum where the image was published in an array of paranormal literature. That path that the photo took from anonymity to low-key infamy is likely known by someone, but that someone is not me, and whoever it may be is evidently not talking, a.k.a. I have no fucking idea yeah. how it went in public, but Weird. it did. Huh. It might be out there. It might even be one of those old books I talked about, but I couldn't find it in my research, hmm. and it really doesn't have much bearing on this. Be that as it may. The image is still making the rounds on the digital superhighway. That's contemporary. That's what all the kids are calling the internet nowadays. <laughs> I'm gonna lie. I haven't seen that phrase literally in print mm, in 20 yeah. fucking years, and I couldn't wait to dust I've it off. I've got my USB stick with my yeah. information. I got my AOL. Let's let's start cruising, the, the, well, boys. That, that's why. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's why. I haven't got their web TVs. <laughs> Web TV. Oh, oh there's God. a dude. We are probably the last generation to even remember Web TV. I remember you had Web TV. Mm -hmm. Holy shit! Mm -hmm. That web browser sucked. Was not optimal. No, I was <laughs> I was building web pages back then, and Web TV would fuck everything. And I had a couple of clients that were strictly Web TV. I'm like, yeah, it's your problem, not mine. Oh, yeah. when we first started building oh American God. Monsters back in the day, it was everything was still like. <laughs> From the dirt up. It was like building a fucking moonshine rig. Oh, dude. It was like building 100%. a still yeah. to do like illegal <clears throat> shady shit, even though it wasn't illegal shady shit. It was just nothing was easy. No. Everything yep. was jury rigged backroom bullshit. I remember your web TV as well. Oh, yeah. Yep. Big fun. Ah, there we go. Big fun. Yes, All right. So web TV. Web TV. Oh. Connecting to the road to a city. <laughs> yeah, <yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Information Sleeper Highway. <clears throat> Exit right. one porn. Be that as it may. <laughs> Exit all porn. Exit all porn. <laughs> <laughs> In an article published on the Paranormal Guide blog on December 26th, 2013, Ashley Hall wrote, quote, many believed that the ghost hand photo was yet another example of successful instrumental trans communication or ITC. I was new to that phrase today. Or yeah, no, I, same. I've never heard this. that. Okay. ITC is essentially the communication between spirits and the living through electronic devices, in parentheses, EVP, ghost box, mm -hmm. etc., are also methods encompassed into ITC. During the 1970s, there was much experimentation going on, and many people were claiming to pull images and audio through the static on television sets and also TVs that were turned off by pointing a camera at the screen and looping the image. One could at times see some interesting images using this method. Many believed this ghost hand image was one such case of ITC. Well, that's interesting. I never heard about that method. That's kind of cool. I, I vaguely recall it in like oh. old paranormal documentaries, like using radio. And, and I guess that same thing too, like the thing that we, we just recently got uh, that cycles box. through yeah. the, the yeah. radio station yeah. or whatever. I mean, we got a spirit box. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Can't wait to try that shit. But huh. anyway, I mean, it's coming right on quote. 
to continue the quote anyway, the woman in question was living in South Minnesota and watched the hand appear on her set, which was unplugged. This fact prompted her to take the photo. Whether she was a researcher or not at the time is unknown, end quote. Hall adds another intriguing tidbit when he states, quote, the only other piece of info about the photo is that the hand had actually appeared the year before at about the same time. What? Yeah. That's a whole other complexion to this thing. Okay. Wait, I'm confused. End quote, of course. Could this mean that the woman had the camera at the ready on the off chance that the phenomenon would reappear? Might she also have unplugged the television to remove any doubt as to its paranormal provenance? These questions seem destined to remain unanswered. But what we do know is that the infamous exposure is a crop of the original. Everyone can see that now when they're looking at it, which revealed the face of the photographer's husband. In the released version, his shoulder is still visible in the foreground, but the original was not readily available. And then I speculate, could we be missing any other vital clues in the unavailable portion of the picture? Who knows? We don't know. But the point is, I understand that she cropped it before they released it because seeing her husband would be obviously a dead giveaway to every fucking person that knew them. Mm, Okay. So for anonymity purposes... You, mm. The photo you we we will see is just an old school TV on like little wooden legs mm-hmm. with like brick a brack on top because it was a piece of furniture that had shit on top of it back then, with the hand, and then you just see this white uh, curve in the foreground, which is evidently her okay. husband's shoulder. Okay. Okay. Right. Fair. Fair. Okay. Weird. As to what's actually being seen in the photo, skeptics' claims run the gamut of all the usual suspects, from pareidolia to reflection to a misinterpreted, excuse me, burnt-in image to a run-of-the-mill hoax. But, as is so often the case, the would-be debunkers fall short in actually explaining how any of these phenomena could result in the image, as even to the most untrained eye, the hand is clearly not the result of a reflection, and its clarity seems to go well beyond the realm of pareidolia. If it's burnt in, which is a permanent discoloration or ghost that appears on the screen after a static image is displayed for far too long, and all of us have had that happen in oh, a yeah. TV at oh one point. Oh my God, yeah, it sucks. Then one has to ask how, in the days before VCRs and DVRs, one could manage to display a picture of an upside down hand long enough for the image to get burned in. It makes no sense. And if it's nothing more than a hoax, considering that this photo was released by 1970 with all of the intrinsic technological limitations, well, then I leave it to more scrupulous skeptics to figure out how it was done. And honestly, if you I, skepticism is a healthy, good way to be. I think oh, we should sure. all be skeptics. Definitely. Debunkers are pieces of shit that need to be kicked the fuck to the curb. But if you're a skeptic well, and you've got well, integrity... <laughs> Look, no, debunkers are garbage. They're just, they're as, they're as useless as true believers that don't take any evidence to believe. They right. don't take any you, evidence to shit. Depends how you define debunker. Yeah. That's how I define a debunker. Okay. A debunker is just in it to shit on something that is not established in, in normal academic and scientific protocols, regardless of the attendant evidence that supports it. That, to me, is a shit heel. But a skeptic that wants to look at it from all angles, please tackle this and, and tell me what you think. Yeah, no, keep keep your mind open. Yeah. You know, don't go writing shit off immediately. Everyone, you know, nobody likes that. Because then you're just not leaving room for anything. Truth. But, I continue, if we are dealing with a genuine paranatural phenomenon, then what is the so-called ghost hand? As Hall indicated, it may be a case of genuine instrumental transcommunication, a phrase that I love is now part of our lexicon, but... Was it merely an unexplained vestige of the past captured on the screen, a sort of stone tape moment embedded on the airwaves with no rationale or purpose? Or, if on the other hand, pun fully fucking intended, there was intelligent agency behind the unusual image, then what was it trying to say? With the information at hand, again, fuck yeah, bring Master the noise. of fucking puns. Oh my God, oh, I'm just beating hands dead horses. Ahoy. Hands ahoy. <laughs> it's frankly all but impossible to surmise what its intentions may have been. Or for that matter, whether or not we're dealing with the dead, an interdimensional, or something we have yet to fathom. It may best be to apply 
Occam's razor to the situation. That's you, for you, buddy. You brought it. I because I love you. Oh, right thank on. you, Christopher. What? Occam's razor. Okay, well, we'll, we'll we'll see what it yeah. is. Occam's razor, Ramon. I mean, what is what is Occam's razor, Mark? Yeah, I, mean, I know you know. It's the clearest <laughs> cut path of the fucking. There you go. Yeah. See. Ish. Oh my god. I'm... Oh god damn. Christian's definitions. <laughs> god Ish. damn it. <laughs> All right. What's the Gordian knot? <laughs> It's the it's the knot that you can only cut in half with a knife because it, you it's it, you can't you can't untie it's, it. It's a metaphor for thinking out of the box, and if it's hard to untie, cut it because that's what Alexander the Great did. You're doing great. All right, last one. If you pass this, honest to God, oh God. it truly <laughs> is fucking International Podcasters Day. What's that? All right, the sword of Democles. Oh shit! Hangs above you precariously. Imagine a sword above my head. Okay. Just think of what that might mean. Sword of knowledge. <sighs> <laughs> so close <laughs> is it is it is it the kobayashi maru yes sword oh it is no it really well oh is it it's the not maru? guaranteed failure okay so kobayashi maru is guaranteed failure it is that uh, a situation so precarious that the tiniest move on anyone's part could result in immediate horrific um d- death and dismemberment so you mean my entire so it's, work career or, you know the cold war your work career my entire career yeah, yeah okay sure. cool so there's a lot of metaphors for it but yeah. you know what god damn it you still won yeah you won you the day usa you, usa dude, you get it dude d plus <laughs> solid <laughs> solid d plus no. that's what i was getting you pass you know what? <laughs> you, it's passing i mean that's that's a c mine that's a c sir okay i appreciate okay. that yeah you know what you are the international podcaster <laughs> and this day is yours I'm so I, proud of this motherfucker right now. I don't even know what to tell I like you. That it's international. <laughs> yeah. You are the international podcast. I am the international podcast. You're the only one. You're the only one I'm celebrating yeah. today. All right, cool. Cool. Oh, I'm so fucking proud All right, right now. Occam's razor has been applied. <sighs> I lost my spot and it's worth it. I don't even care. Oh, I'm so just happy. Look for Occam's oh, razor. Yeah. I know. I'm looking, start there. I'm all, oh, there it is. Yeah, yes. There you go. All right. <laughs> sort of democracy. It may best. <laughs> It may be best to apply Occam's razor to this situation and simply assume that whatever this thing is and wherever it's from, it was merely waving hello. A simple salutation between worlds. After all, what better time for goodwill between strangers is there than Christmas Eve? No, that's not true. There you go. I mean, just a nice day. You don't you don't have to be Christian. You can be a secular Christmas lover. You can be anybody, anywhere, anytime, and be like, hey. Hey, buddy. Yeah. It's Christmas Eve. There you go. How you doing? Merry, Merry. Having a hard time wrapping that shit? Your hubby a little overwhelmed right Merry, now? Merry Christmas. TV's unplugged. I'm waving at you. Is it upside down? I didn't mean to be. Yeah. I'm in another fucking dimension. Yeah. I don't know where I'm waving from. <laughs> That's true. Up is down. Left is lefter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and this hand is ridiculous. It's big. It's huge. Yeah, I love to wonder, that's why I like how big the TV actually is, because it's a pretty big hand. It seems like a fairly sizable Large, old school yeah. zenith rca style i mean it's not like fully floor mounted it's that got like the little legs but clearly a goddamn hand yeah <laughs> there is no there's no debate there's no debate what there's this no debate. is you no, can't you know no one can be like well actually no that's just not pareidolia no you can't no well, it's a hand i mean it's, it's a, a hand, hand. It's and a it's hand. not a fucking reflection as i said because where the fuck would the hand be to reflect <laughs> Dude, yeah. I mean, that hand would have to be pretty fucking close to reflect that. This big. is some Prince of Darkness shit, dude. Oh, Straight there it is. Up, dude. Yeah, the Black <laughs> Abyss. Not enough fingers dude. from the six uh, years. It's true. Yeah, it's demon. true. Uh, all right, man. In terms of the photograph's <laughs> historical pedigree, however, one can easily suggest that an uncorroborated and uncredited image of a standard, albeit fairly large and upside down human hand, would hardly set the academic world afire. But this odd image has another serious strike going against its notoriety. And that is, at nearly the exact same time, astronaut William Anders from the window of Apollo 8 snapped what nature photographer Galen Rowell described as, quote, the most influential environmental photograph ever taken. The now-renowned Earthrise image showing our fragile blue world rising above the horizon of the barren gray and clearly fucking real moonscape. So it's, because it's, it's fallen second banana here. It's international podcast. I'm not going to argue the moon today. I have my stance and you both have your own stance. Most of the internet and free world has their stance. Sure. I have mine. You know Me what? Me and my people believe what we want to believe. You've earned the right to believe whatever you want today. That's right. Today, you, you enjoy the lie of the moon as as the one and only international podcaster. You win, sir. <laughs> Today, yep. yep. Right. Tomorrow is a different story. <laughs> I suppose now. 
<laughs> Not happy about Moving it. on. <laughs> All right, here we go. I know I tend to use this phrase a lot when dealing with an array of similar subjects, but our next three cases truly are the standard bearers for the brief yet bizarre encounter. Our second case, and the first of these short burst encounters, almost certainly counts as one of the smallest on record. I just fucking needed that. I need to share. I'm just going to keep going. Published on the unexplainedmysteries.com forum on October 16th, 2005 by a user known only as Mr. Vort. Here is the incident in all its brief and extraordinarily weird glory. Quote, when I was little, my mom's TV was on. And she was still sleeping. And when I went to tell her, a white bunny thing jumped out and punched me until my parents came out into the hall. End quote. End of account. Yes. Okay. All right. Um. Continue. Continue. Yeah. There's, there's <laughs> nothing another, yeah. else we can do with that. That's what can not... we say about this interlude, save for the obvious facts, that one shouldn't fuck with Mr. Bunny Punch and punch, Jesus Christ, say it weird, <laughs> and something all kids and gangsters need to learn at some point, snitches get stitches. That's right, kid. Okay. Don't, don't fucking Don't talk. tell your mom the TV's no. on when your mom doesn't need to know the fucking TV's on. Yep. What the fuck is wrong with you? I almost feel like this is like an alien older brother that's just like, fucking, I was sneaking out at you know, the house or doing some shit, and yeah. you were fucking about to narc on me, and I just pounded the fuck out of your arm. Something you'll recover from, right. but you will learn to shut your fucking mouth. Yeah. When when the fucking Mr. Bunny Punch, as I've dubbed him, is coming out of the TV to do his yeah. fucking thing, and he's not bothering fucking you, you shut the fuck up. Maybe you know, I'm defending. Maybe I'm defending the fucking I think so, uh, perpetrator yeah, no, of the crime. No, here. I mean a, a child yeah, was just, assaulted. Yeah. Was so child, yeah. Was, yeah. I, let me rethink my stance. Yeah. yeah. Let's. Do, you can't punch kids. In all fairness, though, Mr. Bunny Punch. Yeah, Mr. Bunny. I mean, punch, what's he gonna do? He's gonna punch you. He's a bunny. This is so absurd. There's nothing we can do with it. No, no. It was no, so no. short and so fucking extraordinary. I absolutely had to share it because I knew you two in particular and the rest of our listeners yeah. would fucking savor that. So it just fucking pops out of a TV and wails the fuck out of this kid. Why? Because he just fucking opened okay. his mouth. I mean, we don't I need guess, to explore. Yeah. No, we don't. That's Table it. that. Table it. It's done. And now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Dear listeners, what's something that scares you? I want you to think of something you fear, no matter how big or small, and consider how it affects your day-to-day. Maybe you're like me and you're afraid of snakes, spiders, rats, bats, the eventual societal breakdown that will be caused by the aftermath of catastrophic disclosure. Or what of the oncoming collision between the Earth and the alleged moon that will release the hordes of marauding frogmen who ride werewolves and thirst for goblin milk and human flesh? Will the Sasquatch save us? I think not, dear friends. This is a war that mankind must fight alone. Now, Halloween lets us have fun with what scares us, but what about those fears that don't involve zombies, ghosts, and frogmen? Therapy can be a great tool for facing your fears and finding ways to overcome them. Because sometimes the scariest thing is not facing your fears in the first place and holding ourselves back. Now, therapy can be helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It will empower you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. Now, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Overcome your fears with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Hellerspace today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Hellerspace. And now, back to the show. Our third short but super sweet installment comes to us from the Humanoid Encounters subreddit and involves entities similar in appearance to a character that is near and dear to all of our hearts. In a post titled Godzilla's, that's plural, in my TV, user July 18 Love, why not, sure. described an incident akin to watching a shockingly Danny Terrio free episode of Dance Fever on interdimensional cable with Rick Sanchez. Quote, this happened a long time ago. 
I was quite young, and because I was afraid of the dark, my bedside lamp was on. Something startled me awake, and I turned to my TV, which was off, and I noticed something on the screen's reflection from my lamp. So I'm assuming you mean the light reflected from the lamp, something on the screen. Quote, there were two reptilian beings that were interacting with each other. Crazy as it sounds, it looked like they were dancing. I quickly looked around the room to see if they were there, but they weren't. I got closer to the TV to get a better look, and one of them noticed me. He turned face forward and started getting closer to me. I ran to my parents and shouted that the Godzillas are in my TV. My parents figured it was a bad dream and tried to get me to go back to bed. Well, I wasn't having any of that, and I slept in their room for the next few nights. From then on, I chalked it up to being a bad dream or the vivid imagination of a six or seven year old. But one thing still bugs the crap out of me, and that is my cat, who slept with me, seemed to freak out too and wouldn't go near my room for a while after that. End quote. Again, dancing Godzillas. You just, I just, I could not talk about it. No, no. I mean, skeptically, you could say, okay, maybe it was whatever the program was. It was some dancing reptilian things that turned around and were just walking towards the screen, like some animation or something like that. Sure. But the cat freaking out is kind of weird. Uh, well, because cats, animals couldn't see. Also. Chris is right, cats. Yeah, cats <laughs> and that's all you need to say. Yeah. 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 But on the other hand, animals really, at least in, in, from what I've heard, I don't, I'm not an expert. They couldn't see two TV technology. Like right. once shit got flat screen 4k, they could interact with television and like react to the lions and tigers and bouncing balls and all the fucking shit. They yeah, saw my dog barks at the TV constantly. But once upon a time, at least again, from what dog owners and cat lovers have told me, they couldn't see shit. Okay. They couldn't recognize the scanning electron. I'm not sure tube. if he's, I'm not okay. sure if he sees it or if he hears it, honestly. Though. So true. That is both. what it is. Yeah. Okay. But, Let's continue here. When asked to elaborate on the incident, as well as the creature's quote unquote features and behavior, July Love responded, I was so young and it was so long ago that my memories are vague, but they reminded me of Godzilla with thinner bodies and they moved with much more ease. I mean, at the time, Godzilla was a man in a monster suit in the movies. His movements were as such. These beings moved like they were real. They looked like they were facing each other, but dancing apart. At least it looked like they were dancing. And again, mm. it could be a mirror image. We don't know. But the thing, and to, you know, to go back to you know what was just said, that really sh struck me is I got closer to the TV to get a better look, and one of them noticed me. He turned face forward and started getting closer to me. So that's what drove it. Wasn't Godzilla dancing on TV? No, it was them noticing you in it moving. Also, yeah. and this is something that you know needs to be acknowledged, is that he's insisting that the TV was off. Granted, the six or seven year old can make a mistake, and you know he's seeing the reflection of the lamp. But when sure. he looks around the room, nothing's in the room. But they are dan. And again, I, weird, I get yeah. that huh. you know someone could say, well, if the TV was on and he wasn't aware of it, it could have yeah. been a weird MTV yeah. commercial from. I mean, we don't even know when this happened of right. like a mere True. dancing Godzilla thing, and it just turns to the camera and goes, "Hey" or whatever. And you're six or seven, and you just woke up and you're scared. Fine, yeah, totally. But also, I mean, I don't know. It could be some fucking weird shit. I weird. think I even address it, and I probably didn't need to digress because I said it here. In light of modern UFO lore, seemingly saturated with stories of allegedly alien reptilian overlords siphoning off our precious bodily fluids for purposes too terrible to mention, it's difficult not to recast this incident in a post ike Draco-infused light. But perhaps there was something else at work here. Though what it is, save a young Gojira fan's weird nightmare is anyone's guess huh and, and and it's true too i mean if there was some weird reptilian thing happening and i hate to do what i just accused me of doing a second right. ago but i mean if it was like reptilian aliens which are i mean probably second only to greys and possibly nordics the most prevalent in yeah. our you know at least lore um maybe he just interpreted it through the lens of a child maybe yeah no yeah, and just as a yeah. as a uh, uh, a public service announcement, whenever we mention Mister Ike, oh, what a piece of shit! A piece of shit! What yes. a fucking you know, like 
dipped in there fucking There are reptilians cat outside shit, of his shit. fucking realm of dumb shittery. So Probably. No, there I mean there's been reptilian accounts. But it's undeniable that he's the guy that brought it to the fore. He, and I'm yeah. not crediting when I say it. I'm yeah. accusing. Well, J'accuse. Well, well, sure. Yeah, no, he's a piece of but shit. But he's a so. he's a turd bucket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. He's a turd bucket. <laughs> Here you go. Turd's gotta go somewhere. Dude. Turd. <laughs> My career. Turds gotta go somewhere. Wow. Yeah, where do they come? To me. Hey, who wants that t shirt? Turds gotta go somewhere. <laughs> that will not we will have you t shirts coming up soon, but that will not be a t shirt. Oh, uh, well, you never know. The turd I mean, whisperer. Fa- the turd oh. oh the turd whisperer. Wow. Well, then we're all gonna need like little fucking catch names. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Catch names. Is that even a thing? What the fuck am I saying? Catch name, catch, yeah. I catchphrases. Like catch names. Did you do, like catch phrases and nickname? Yeah, yeah. No, I get catch it. name. Catch, catch name. name. What's your catch right. name, bro? Yeah, there you go. Bobby, fuck off, dude. dude. Bobby what's Bodacious. What's your, what's your nick phrase? A wow. my nick phrase, bro. Hell yeah. Oh, shit in a bucket, bro. Go. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's shit right. in a bucket, bro. <laughs> All right. Turns for life. All right. Tur- turns away. Trust me, I'm going to get this fucking shit back, but not quite yet. All right. Here we go. In 2021, uh, no, fuck that. Paragraph too early. Our fourth and final in this stretch of short stories. By that, I mean the fourth story and the final of our shorties. Yeah, totally. Okay. Uh, is sketchy as fuck. <laughs> Not so much in what happened, though it's plenty fucked up and is sketchy, but in the fact that the only source I could find was in the comments of the above story, the Godzilla story that we were just dealing with. I include it only as a point of interest. In 2021, a user named Easy Rider 321, I mean, how easy is it to ride? 321. Yeah, 321, yeah. baby. Yeah. Recalled another strange TV based account. Quote, I remember reading another story on the subreddit about a kid who was living in Italy and late at night, the TV went snowy and then a family appeared on the TV with two little kids. By the way, did my best to find this, could not find it. But I will say in my defense, looking up anything on Reddit with the with the key phrases, paranormal, television, uh, la la. Oh, yeah. You're dude, only going to get like fucking it. ghost adventure yeah, 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 references yeah. out the wazoo. Yeah, no, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. So uh, whatever. So anyway, there's a family two little kids the kids seemed to notice him and either touch the screen or made motions to the screen that the little girl could see him the little girl being one of the tv kids i'm assuming Hmm. she motioned to her brother and he said to her he can't help us oh god or something like that and she began to cry the kids left and a guy and girl came in front of the screen and the guy ended up assaulting the girl or some treacherous shit i don't know uh, it got vague okay or something he says all right bad bad scene all around bad scene okay. so a kid Jesus. that can't be helped and uh, inexcusable it's assault possible domestic violence the My God. op swore i don't know what op means you guys know what that means? original poster original, original yeah. poster swore that he saw this on italian tv when he was a little kid over there it was a story in the humanoid encounters reddit does anyone else know what story I'm remembering or talking about? Because I remember that story being very weird and interesting, too. End quote. I'd agree with that assessment, I add. And I'm forced to wonder, what if beings that are evidently embedded in the airwaves are not only predators, but victims, too? The very thought is anxiety-inducing. Yeah, inducing, I can't live me. in that world, man. Well, we have to, because it no, might I mean, be true. No, I mean, we're here. We're doing it, but yeah. goddamn. All right. I mean, I mean thank you. I mean, thank it's bad for, enough thank for streaming. to think there's things in the mm. nebulous ether that are trying to, like, piggyback or jack into fucking, like, whatever. Right. To, like, contact us, to harm us, to, you know, whatever they're going to fucking do. But the fact that there's, there might be <coughs> things there, the equivalent of children that are fucking well, being... Also, uh, too, that I are mean, terrified or, and, 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 and well, also yeah. individuals being victimized. It's or, fucking untenable if this is just a community if this is how they communicate with us is through the 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 tv waves like that if it's like if there's some uh, if they're they're in some other plane of reality some other existence some other dimension and they just happen to communicate this way we could be communicating with them this way and not even maybe not even realize well the funny thing is it's interesting that you you mentioned that i mean it's not like we if if you are a culture like you guys remember the Ricky Gervais film that like the invention of lying where he posited a world where oh, no yeah. one knew what, yeah. what it was to lie. And then he invented it and mm-hmm. then made up the 1300s as a really exciting time. So he could steal Jennifer Garner from Rob Lowe. That's all I really remember about that movie. And then he claimed to invent the bike or something like that. But he if there, if we are dealing with cultures that quite reasonably maybe don't even understand not only lying, but what the concept of fiction is. And you are getting oh, well, yeah, bombarded yeah. by airwaves from 
um, the earth, just full of our cinema, our TV, our whatever, all violent and and crazy. Not all, but so much. Whether it be our, you, you would, and if you thought all of this was true, you would have a. I mean, you would have a fucked view of us anyway, just based on how we treat each other in yeah, the real I world. Mean, but if you added the fiction to it and couldn't tell it was fiction, and and what I mean, let's let's postulate further. What if there's another culture out there? just as violent maybe even more so thinking oh we found kindred spirits and they're just sending information (sighs) back to us in a way that they think we can not only comprehend but savor and it's funny i enjoy like hyper violent movies i love old john woo movies i love kong Fu. i love fucking you know lucio folky films and horror films i love it all when i know it's latex and fake and whatever so i have those caveats to fall back on yeah but i can but if you don't know the difference how fucked would that be? I mean, oh, yeah. you know I mean, what? We all need to watch more Little House in the Prairie. Do we, though? Yeah, we do. Because I've tried. And I'm actually related to Laura Ingalls Wilder. That's, she's like one of my great aunts or something. What? Yeah. You never told us this? I'm sure I did at some point. I don't think so. I don't I've yeah. never heard this. No, I'm fucking, I'm part of all the right. Little House in the Prairie fucking family thing. But I still can't stand that show. Little Rob on the Prairie. Little Rob on the Prairie. Okay. Learn to live with that. Table that. Oh, yeah. And come oh, back yeah. to that at a different time. Sure. Yeah. We I don't didn't know this right about now. you. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I don't uh, make any money from the estate or anything. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I didn't know this yeah. at all. I'm fucking shocked. Writers weren't in the family. Dude, Arguably, she was no better. shit. A little Bob. Little Bob. Little prayer. Bobby. Little right. Bobby milking a goat. I was going to churning butter. Yep. All Being right. blind. Weird. In a little just, Yeah, right, right. Yeah, weird. Okay. I'm. Fuck Nellie Olson. I'm I, fucking. I know that much about Little House. I think that was her name. Yeah, was her name? I think so, yeah. I, okay, I'm fucking blown away. Let's get back to the story. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Sorry, sorry my pedigree so lofty. No, I'm I had no, I was, Listen, I wasn't trying to brag. You've never told us this. Yeah. I'm. Well, it's, you know, how often am I going to bring it up? Okay. I fucking every day. Sure. <laughs> what the hey, fuck? Every, every day? <laughs> yes, every okay. day. All right, now, all right, bring it back. We're, all bring, we're going all right, back. We're going back. TV creatures I'm fucking being blown, weird. I'm fucking blown away. Yeah. I mean, it has no effect on me, but yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh <laughs> Our fifth and final (laughs) encounter comes to us from journalist and Texas native Brian Bethel, who in 1994 wrote of a frightening experience he had while spending the night at his grandparents' home sometime in 1976 or 77. In this account, Bethel wrote, quote, Long ago, when I was about four or five, I stayed over at my grandparents' house for the night. My mom stayed over with me because dad was out of town on business. Granny and Granddad quite enjoyed their television programs and had set in each of the two bedrooms in the house, as well as the living room, or excuse me, and didn't, and set, had a set, let me reread that, and had a set, a television set. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. In each of the two bedrooms in the house, as well as the living room. I was still stupid enough to believe TV's flickering, mind-sucking images were pretty neat, so I was in heaven. Night came softly as it only can when you feel safety and warmth around you. Boy, that's the best moments of childhood if you're lucky enough to have them. With one of Granny's home-cooked meals in my stomach, I had begun to feel the need for slumber. So we all piled in the monstrous king-sized bed in Granny and Granddad's master bedroom, and soon we were all snoring blissfully. It was then that something inexplicable startled the child. That's me writing. Quote, I woke up in the night and sat upright, looking around. Something had disturbed my slumber. Granddad was still snoring rhythmically, and Grandma looked like she hadn't budged an inch. So I sat back and prepared to visit the realm of dream once more. Then the television turned itself on. Always a bad sign. Now, I'm 22 years old. Bear in mind that was as of 1994. But this was in the days when remote controls were the providence of the wealthy and debased. Granny and Granddad did not fit into any of these two categories. To see a television turn itself on was an interesting thing. I sat up again to see what would come on. At that time, the TV in my grandparents' bedroom was black and white. I watched the white dot that formed in the middle expand to a full screen, but only the static of a dead channel appeared. And God, I remember that well. That little beep. And oh, yeah. Beep. I can't yeah. Make, yeah, the sound, but yeah. Then images began to appear. I couldn't really describe them. They were sort of shadowy things at first, but they seemed to be, for lack of a better term, scoping me out. Slowly, an actual image began to appear. 
end quote. It was at this point that longtime fans of the show will recognize a familiar group of once comforting turned terrifying TV characters. Bethel continued. Muppets. No. Nah. The Muppets were on. I was exalted, elated, end quote. It is understandable as I being about the same age as that writer as we all are fucking fully would have shared that reaction. Whenever there was children's programming on at night, really, I was like, sure. fucking oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 You know, whether it was, you know, seasonally because it was associated with a holiday yeah, but, or like a special rerun of Mary Poppins or whatever the fuck yeah, it anything, was. Yeah. Anything that was for kids was like, uh, like a fucking like an instant rush of joy because it's so funny. Like we talked about earlier, they didn't think to entertain children in the PM for the longest fucking oh, time. Oh, yeah, no. Until no. we were practically into adulthood. Yeah, T- TGIF. So it was a moment to be savored, and I can appreciate where uh, Brian's coming from in this. The eyewitness continued, chronicling the moment where his joy was replaced by the first traces of anxiety. Quote, I wanted to wake my grandparents up, but then, but then I started to feel a bit uncomfortable about what was happening on the television. Muppets did not usually have fangs, as I recall. Oh, shit. At least not ones that look so real and out of place in an otherwise standard Muppet-style mouth, end quote. And suddenly, we're in all-too-familiar territory. Yeah, we know where this goes, dude. Man, all right, well. Mm. ah, It's not good. Yeah. Staring at the screen with a combination of curiosity and concern, Bethel recalled what was running through his mind. Quote, Uncertain about what to do, I decided to keep a close watch on the television. The Muppets looked at me. It was common, of course, on Sesame Street and The Muppet Show for them to acknowledge the audience, so I wasn't alarmed so much by that. I described these things as Muppets because that's primarily what they looked like. Other than the rows and rows of unusual teeth, one looked vaguely Grover-esque, and the other sort of reminded me of Harry the Monster. always liked that one. Which he says, I don't know if it's on Sesame Street anymore. And editor's note, Harry is still a supporting player on Sesame Street. It was at this point, to his shock, young Brian went from being a passive viewer to an active participant. Quote, the Grover-esque Muppet leaned over and pointed at me while whispering something to his companion. They looked at me in unison, whispering all the while in a strange, unusually guttural tongue. It sounded completely random, although it did somehow seem to follow the meter and pattern of language, end quote. As if all of that weren't troubling enough, it was then that, quote, I noticed when the Grover-esque Muppet pointed, he had very long, distinct talons on his furry hands. This, too, was quite disturbing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I mean, (laughs) what the fuck? Yeah, no shit. It was then that, quote, the Muppets began to dance, sing, and cavort about in that strange language of theirs. It was sort of amusing, I recall. I began to feel a bit more at ease. Oh, yeah, that's always a trouble. The situation would not last long, as just moments later, quote, the Muppets motioned for me to come forward. I shook my head. The Muppets tried again. I shook my head. I was beginning to feel frightened. If there ever was a way Muppets could look pissed, these guys were doing it. <laughs> With all those rows of fangs, it wasn't pretty. Oh, shit. Man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <sighs> I should mention that all of the singing, dancing, cavorting horror that was going on seemed in no way to disturb my grandparents. This disturbed me as well because these guys were loud. The Muppet things were visages of absolute anger now, motioning violently for me to approach the screen. My attempts to rouse my grandmother and grandfather were in vain. They would not stir, end quote. Terrified and not knowing what else to do, the child, quote, got out of bed and crept into the living room, being careful to avoid approaching the screen, God. I played that game just being I mean, scared of shit that was on the screen. Yeah, really, Much less yeah. things that were Actually fucking- Actually seeing something. Yeah, beckoning me in a horrific way. Oh, boy. So that poor, poor bastard. Yeah, shit. Yeah. I ran into the living room crying. I collapsed in my granddad's chair, buried my face into the fabric, and began to weep, certain that doom had come for me, end quote. The boy might not have been wrong. 
as now, no sooner than he'd escaped the range of the bedroom television, he noticed the distinctive low hum of the until now inert living room TV coming to life. Oh, shit. I looked over at the television in the corner of the living room. It had already begun to turn itself on. The shadow forms that had dissolved into Henson-styled horrors already beginning to flicker across its surface. I screamed, rooted to the spot, but as the scream left my lungs and two grinning, fanged faces burst into being on the television screen, I faintly, and then with increasing tempo, I heard footsteps. The things in the television looked worried. That's a little unsuspecting twist. Oh boy. Swirled into their shadow forms and were gone. The television winked out just as my mother ran into the room. Yeah, thank God, Jesus. I know. That's mm, fucking okay. I mean, at first you hear the pitter patter of feet, and you you guys remember the old I don't remember which puppet tear we're gonna reference them in a second, but the one where the fuck all like Bert looking thing was trying to get through the window. Oh, the yeah, kid yeah. Would, like walk oh, yeah. through the house yeah. and then down the hallway yeah. and like into yeah. one of the bedrooms and this thing's like trying to get in through the window yeah. and it's like oh help yeah. me out like I'm thinking like it's a physical manifestation. That's what I thought was yeah yeah no sure. thank God it's just his ma. And if this was done in like dramatic reenactment style, like if we had a TV show and fucking and it was done, you'd hear that little and you'd like be like oh and then mom shows up and you'd be like oh my god there you go a breath of fucking fresh air thank God cinematic delights quotes continue after consoling me. We went to check on Granny and Granddad. They were both awake and had heard me scream. We all sat up for a while talking, and eventually the warmth and love returned to fill the chill in my soul. I went to bed and nothing more happened that night, or any other night that I stayed with my grandparents, end quote. As to what might explain the unnerving incident, Bethel pondered, quote, a waking dream? Probably so, but one that still fills me with terror. I was awake, of course, mom will assert, when I was in the chair, so I did move somehow from the bed to the chair. Still, it gives one pause. What better way to snare a young boy than to show him something he loves than pull him in unawares? Whatever those two things were, I'm sure the Muppet forms were not their natural shape. I'm sure the fangs and talons were a part of it, though. If they're still out there, I hope they haven't had much time to practice those forms. If they could get them just right. His words trailed off ominously before adding, I still wonder what would have happened, dream or not, if I had put my then small hands up to the screen there in my grandparents' bedroom. Perhaps nothing. And then again, perhaps it's better not to know. End quote. In terms of how this event affected the boy who would grow up to write these words, Bethel added this as a postscript. In case you're wondering, I don't watch much television anymore. It all seems so diabolical. Adding, no Muppets or Sesame Street for my kids as soon as I get some. (laughs) Dude, yeah, I would stay the fuck away from those shows 100%. When you got some weird, crazy layers of teeth, fangs, and talons thing from the back of the TV to eat you out of your grandparents' house. I mean, you're, you have to assume the worst. Yeah, they're not there to have a party. Why would they have fangs and talons? They're like, it's pizza. It's not. Exactly. It's death. Predators predate. Yeah, exactly. That's the deal. I mean, I don't think bears are evil, but they will rip you limb from fucking limb and yeah, feed and you to their young. And Muppets that's, in the television with yeah. fangs. Trying to entice you. Yeah. In the same way, like a baby crying oh, yeah, in the yeah. woods in like the Scottish Highlands. Yeah, dude. Like, don't... sure, you could be a good citizen and that go back and fine. rescue the orphan. That baby's fine. Or a Kelpie could be luring you to your doom. That baby's yeah. okay. I mean, I would check on the baby if I could, baby's I suppose. That baby's fine. If I had enough people with me. There's people, that, there's, right. there's someone that, that's their job is check on crying babies. Yeah, in the they woods. have baby checkers, yeah, right? Not in your, the Scottish Highlands. It's not your job. Yeah, it's not yeah. my job. No, no you're right. It's I forgot. Not. It's a it's an actual career path. It is. It yeah. is. Exactly. All right. Let's let's wrap this up and then we'll deal with it. Heroes of the Scottish Islands. Oh my God. Not us. Absolutely no. not. Not us. In an ongoing saga involving one of our listeners who had the courage to come forward with her harrowing account of encountering a terrifying version of Sesame Street's resident OCD vampire Count von Count. And for those looking to catch up on those episodes, they are. 152, 203, and 308, respectively. We've seen alarming Muppet-like entities complete with rotting human teeth. 
one can't help but to wonder what type of sinister force would twist these beloved characters to first endear themselves to, then in the next moment completely horrify any child who happens to be sleeping in the range of a TV set which at this point is literally millions of potential victims. I know my niece and nephew. I know I, my, my mom got us TVs in her room because my dad was complete TV czar. And he, yeah. it's all dad's word at a certain time. And yeah, dominated. No. So we had our own, I, I've slept with a TV I, since I was 12. I've never not had a TV. No, same here. No, same. You know, around. Yeah. So, I mean, and little kids, I've definitely seen plenty of little kids with TVs in their room. I mean, I'm not saying it's, obviously it's not a prevalent problem or if it is, Kids are being replaced by something nefarious and God knows what. I mean, but I'm no, not conspiratorial, sure. nor do I think a lot of kids are being affected by this. But it's still potentially, as I just said, millions of victims. Ah, the advent of the Internet, dude, may have saved everybody. Right. You know? So we don't know what these things are. And the answer to that question is as murky as it is unnerving. But whatever these things turn out to be, ghosts, demons, aliens, interdimensional interlopers, psychic parasites cruising the invisible airways hoping to burrow into the brains of inexperienced and defenseless human children, we can be sure that their intentions and agendas are not ones that align with our own. And we should all keep an open mind when listening to the so-called manufactured musings of kids accused of having overactive imaginations. Because every now and then, the whimsy of a child just might be truth. And if those of us possessing expanded perspectives on reality aren't looking out for the youngest and most vulnerable amongst us, then who is? Ah, uh, TV terrors, lurkers Shit. in the airwaves. So I guess the theory I'm coming away with here is that these types of communications and interactions were possible because of the the television signals presumably that's what i'm thinking i mean what i mean what choice do you have but to assume that? not saying that like obviously like the first one with the hand yeah but i mean this kind of like runs the game uh, that that obviously was the outlier yeah that's a whole yeah. different breed yeah of cat. No, that, that definitely runs runs the gamut here but i wonder if it is something where like if just whatever these whatever this um i don't know phenomena is if it can just harness itself onto tv signals and just put itself in the butt they're not coming out of the television they're not coming at you really right. they're just kind of like communicating yeah. through it it's not like a poltergeist situation where like it's dragging you in or pushing you out or like the ring or something like that sure. so yeah that is super creepy but i, I mean, wonder in it, terms of what we saw but like brian bethel mentioned like what if he had touched his hands to the screen what yeah if, what no if, like, man that's scary i mean dude. We, we are i mean we are electrically electrically conductive creatures i mean our synapses all sorts of things yeah. if he had actually touched his hand to the screen and created like a tangible connection could they have manifested? Could they have come into him or no. even into the, the reality separate of him? I mean, I don't yeah, know. I, don't know. I, I mean, it's... I, yeah, yeah. But they do seem to be limited to uh, piggybacking on the airwaves, showing up on the screen, but why would they beckon? And that, and that happened in at least two of the cases, I think. Yeah. The kid and uh, um, maybe the Italian one that was very vague. Um, like... Come come forward and like he can't help us. He he doesn't know. Yeah, no, well, it's whatever. It's I mean, weird, we don't have enough to go on with that. It's a super weird interaction, though. Like, but but uh, why would like the Grover esque nightmare be beckoning a child? Well, if if he could just manifest in reality and and attack such. As child? the thing is, maybe maybe whatever it is, yeah. it's just the only way the only form of communication it has is over t a TV signal. Which is kind of crazy because if you think about TV signals, how wide they are and how like how much they can like you know just shoot out across an area. Well, like, that's a whole goddamn pretty, point. The point yeah, is a whole other yeah. yeah. They they go everywhere all the time. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I know there was a thing twenty something years ago. I remember I was dating a girl, and I gave her an old TV because she was just she was an actress. She was living here working for the local children's theater. And, uh, you know, just living in the efficiency apartment, just doing what she had to do. So I gave it to her. And there was like a thing where you had to get like a booster signal because the Congress had said like, oh, no, there still needs to be free TV. You can't just charge people. 
And so she got some booster thing. Yeah, you can get like some rabbit watched. ears and shit. You can like put them on your roof. And... That's the last time I have heard of because I've had no reason to look into it. N- yeah. Non-cable, non-streaming yeah. options. No, you they you, you can still do that. I'm, but I, I assume they're still broadcasting. I, that's what I'm saying. I yeah, don't yeah, know. No, I, I mean, I'm going, oh, you know what? It may have recently went digital, though, because I'm pretty sure one of the last times that I had to get one of those ear sets, it was like a digital converter. But how if, how do they blast it out if it's digital? That doesn't make any sense because there's we we can't, we don't know. No, that, we we're don't. We're not going to fall we into don't. that Regardless track. of whatever yeah, these things are, I, I thank God for Netflix. Thank God for Hulu, so, uh, YouTube uh, TV, AMC Plus, Discovery Plus. So here's the thing: they don't seem to be able to piggyback on streaming packets. No. Ergo, the our new method of watching TV seems to be safe from the damned. Yes, exactly. They can't harness your technology. And and here's the other thing: they clearly weren't organized enough to fully create an invasion force on because for, oh, for decades the invasion force yeah everyone had television antennas most people got their tv through yeah. the airwaves and then you know i mean i remember when fancy cable was like 12 channels you know fucking yeah from like 2 to 13 and you know you were a lucky duck yeah, if you, you got to, it you to 13 yeah yeah, exactly. you, yeah. <laughs> and then you had like the, the chunky box over. that was like not yeah, even wireless man. yeah if they had really so here's the thing i'm just speaking pragmatically if these things I, I'm, I'm not saying they're not dangerous and i'm not saying they're not predators no, they're but definitely they, dangerous, they might be like sure. animals in that you know al- alligators aren't going to like create an invasion force and take over florida though they technically probably could 100 before pythons anyway yeah, definitely um because they don't have the means to do it i'm right. thinking these things have singled out individuals when for some reason the whatever oh. the power they had was able to like manifest more if you had too many fucking antennas i don't fucking know why they could show up at oh, like their grandparents house yeah. or whatever but these few people um were targeted because they were young enough they were naive enough and these things came through but they clearly either didn't have the wherewithal the intelligence or the motive the motivation or the organizational skills to come through on mass or they simply um, it was just happenstance when they happened to pop through on the screen. And they're like, oh, my God, I see something and I'm hungry and I'm going to try to do it, uh, get them to come closer. And maybe they didn't even know if it would work or not. Yeah. I mean, we no. don't, I mean, I mean, I know I'm pissing in the wind. Who knows? I didn't. I mean, it's, it's just too weird. It's I wait. Mean, it's so fucking bizarre. Because you don't really know. I mean, who know? what if you were just picking up some weird shit from Germany? Some yeah, weird, okay. creepy, you know, right, so like pragmatically. You, you, know yeah. I mean? like, you I really could be picking. Oh, really, they dude, think they were talking. And to let's them. not. Maybe, maybe they were. Let's maybe not they were, forget like, one of our favorites, public access TV. Oh, I love public. A lot access. of weird shit back in the day on public yeah, access. That's TV. true. Lots of weird right. shit. But also, Just I mean, saying. tubes and transistors and that old technology is. I mean, that could also be reason. Yeah, I mean, it's it seems like as antiquated as that shit is, it just seems like that apparently is the gateway for these things to fucking travel. Well, ITC, bizarre. My favorite new phrase, fucking or acronym, is something that was used uh, apparently a lot in the seventies and eighties to try to communicate with these things. Um, And it's still used to this day, as we were talking about spirit for radio. Yeah. 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 uh, So. EMPs, EVPs. Because obviously radio still works on the same technology it always worked on, whereas TV has gone through all these permutations that we went through at length. Ah, radio. Don't forget satellite radio. I I mean, I'm going to because I have no fucking reason to bring it up. My truck just signed me up (sighs) for a fucking trial. Okay. For serious. I'm like, I don't even care. All right. Yeah. I I don't want to talk about radio. No, no, I mean. What I want to talk about is. (laughs) Your truck signed Weird, nefarious quasi not even evil just things that are looking out for their own self-preservation and 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 things that are easy to predate on are children the weak the wounded whatever and and just why they come through why they target the people they target and how come it did not happen on moss because they had decades right. to well, do it throughout almost every household especially I mean, in the united states but maybe like you said maybe it was targeted maybe whatever this thing is is targeting specific people or or maybe maybe it's something that's totally phantasmagorical that's just using the tv as a conduit Whoa. whether it's a demon or a spirit or whatever that's just in the area or in the house and that it just it's it's putting itself through the tv and that's just like its method of communication if if it is if it is the itc or or, or, or whatever that is it couldn't have been too common though because there were tons of antennas uh, yeah. constantly things broadcasting right. there so if these things could co-opt right. the signal and use it why is it so rare 
Or yeah. maybe people start I mean, talking about it. You know, well, I'm sure that big ghost scare back. In I'm the sure day. that's true to a degree. Most paranormal accounts, as in all things, ufological, cryptological accounts, are not reported. We know that. Right. Some people conservatively say it's a one in ten ratio. I'd say it's more like a one in fifty. People that actually come forward, make a full on report. This yeah. happened to me. All this shit. Yeah, that's, almost, that's it almost never happened. It's a, it's hard to say. Yeah, it's but I, to, I yeah. So it's, it's probably between that, my though. liberal estimate and other conservative estimates. So let's say twenty five. One in 25 people, but whatever it is, it's not a lot, but still considering the ubiquity of TV antennas of receiving signals, the fact that so few people, and we did have that one listener story where, um, I remember there was like these dark figures and they were asking, I think for help or something. There's three girls. And it was like, um, yeah, I don't, that was like a portal to open up like a portal, the portal opened to the house, but it started with a television signal that was, uh, hijacked, I think. Really, I can't. I mean, I can't remember. I, I remember that because that they were talking about like 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 the master's coming or something, and it was like these weird like entities, and yeah. and behind them was like it was like a paradise like landscape yeah. or something. Yeah. So maybe again, that's the yeah. I mean, again, now now I'm really fucking stretching because we don't even remember if the TV was involved, but maybe that can trigger a full on explosive uh fucking Stardust Ranch style interaction yeah, with a could, portal. Yeah. But you have to, I don't know, interact with it in a certain way. The signal has to be strong enough. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. Who the fuck knows what the criteria yeah. are? One of them damn, them giant ass old satellite dishes people used to have in their yard. Remember those oh, things? Oh, could you imagine? Yeah, that thing t- is, what was that? What was talking what was to aliens? Terror movie. Vision. The one shitty yeah. horror movie that was based on using a satellite yeah. dish to yeah. capture. Wasn't it like an alien from like a prison barge or something? I know Garrett Graham was in it. Yeah, dude. I know. Um, what's her nuts from um, uh, Amityville Part Vision. 2, Diane something, and um, Last American Virgin. She was the female star of those. And some you know punk kid that was in all those movies. And Mary Warnov was the mom. Garrett Graham was the dad. They were like these uber. It was almost like cliched 80s people living in their like super that. house. It was like I kind of remember grandpa too, yeah. was living there. The punk rock daughter. The the boyfriend of the punk rock daughter was the same guy who played the werewolf in Monster Squad and like one of the young punk cops in Running Scared with Billy Crystal. I know I'm going down a fucking wormhole. And it was so over the top and campy that I almost didn't like it when I was a kid. But it's really grown on me. Nice. The mom was like a robot junkie anyway the satellite dish brings down an alien thing and what they think is a horror host a local horror host like medusa or something ends up being like an alien i don't know like bounty hunter thing and it's talking to him and the, and the grandpa who's like a fucking gun toting like reagan 80s fucking nutball and the kid have to basically weapon up and fight an alien it's not a great movie but I would say watch it immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Rob's <laughs> and it's the closest parallel to what right, we're talking yeah. about here that I've seen in fictional form. No, dude, I yeah. dig it, man. I, I do think. I mean, I got to think like just as like radio happened and there, and there was pirate radio. Sure. I mean, there's people that had access to oh, just pirate TV. Well, there's definitely a lot of bootleg TV some, shit. Oh yeah, just for putting sure. some some Max shit Hedrum, out on yeah. there, and, and you could, might just oh, happen yeah, to just Hedrum, there you go alien yeah. shit whack stuff yeah no it could be just some I mean, weird like yeah, but, film shit i'm not saying that's yeah. what it is i'm, I'm well, just saying it's always a possibility it's, though it, skeptically I feel like speaking the thing that throws me for a loop and the reason why i can't just like hold on to that for dear life and say oh yeah this is probably what it is well, i'm not holding is, on for dear life to it i'm just well I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, i wasn't suggesting <laughs> you were but the the reason <laughs> i i'm, I'm <laughs> rejecting it out of hand is that they seem to be actively interacting with seemingly the people yes and yes, I know um, Sesame Street and The Muppet Show, as was pointed out by Bethel, constantly talked yep. to the young viewers and, and made them feel special. And that's that's a hallmark of yeah, children's shows. Yeah, that's shows. a thing. But hallmarks of children's shows don't happen at 3 a.m. with befanged, obviously angry, hop-along dancing entities. Yeah, it's true. And dancing Godzillas are surely a sign of the apocalypse. They are. They are. If anything has told us the end is near, it is dancing Godzillas. Thank you all for joining us, Kryptonaut Podcast. <laughs> you know what? The dance of Zillers. Happy International Podcast oh. Day. You guys forgot. You mean you? I no, didn't. Because it's, it's your holiday. Probably. I don't no, forget. I was about to congratulate you. Yeah, the international podcast. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Apparently, you, it's your day. Just you, you passed <laughs> two and a half of the big three, and I'm so proud I of you did. right now. Yes, dude. I look made at you. It. You're, you're a new man. I am the sort of Democles. 
Oh my god. Yeah. You hang above oh, all of us. Above You're all the sword. Of you. okay. Keep I us on our sword. fucking uh, toes. That's right. Yeah. Watch your steps, boys. Wow. Watch your steps. That seems a little harsh for friendship. Yeah. No. Wow. It, no. Yeah, it's it w- here. It's it's empowering. Is it though? Yeah. T- to you for you. No. It's never. It, not, not, yeah. The guy who can fucking fall and impale us. Nothing bad ever happens. I've never fallen. Oh my and god. Do you, you not? Oh. You do not I understand do. Understand what I, the sword of Democles is? But my version is different. Okay. I take a different tact, a different approach. I'm the new version of the sword of Democles. <laughs> okay, keep you on your toes. Boy. Never. Yeah. Now, a, but, listen, you know what? It's always a teaching moment. Okay. okay, I'm not here to punish. I'm here to teach. Okay, and? it's made out of paper mache. It's not really threatening. Exactly. It's only wow. made out of paper mache. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird balloon sword. Okay, is that better? Oh my god, Sweet. you are like it's, our it's, white trash. It's Q. a balloon sword, <laughs> and white trash oh Q god. is a reference only Chris is going to appreciate. Oh, but you are that. Yeah, oh, we yeah. got some Jesus Patreon Christ. shout outs to do. Yeah, Robert. Hold on, I'm pouring bourbon. The good so the good folks that support us over there they are saints. Patreon.com everyone slash Kryptonop podcast. Oh. And let's bring up this list there, good sir. All right. Beginning with Peace MG. Thank you, Peace MG. The cut cut devil riding bad horse with diabetes. Yes. Oh my God, that's that is, so deep. That Hell is yeah, else. Dude. so deep. Hell yeah. I love all those references. Cut cut was arguably one dude. of the great villains of paranormal lore. And even though only us and our viewers or listeners know, mm. uh, bad horse, come on. And the yeah. beaties. Oh, yeah. There it is. All right, I'm sorry. I can't That's go away. I mean, yeah. yeah. There it is. Todd DeZago. Oh, our buddy there from the Perhapanauts. Yeah. Which fucking illustrious author. Yeah. I'm taking a bunch of those to, to read. So, cause, uh, cause yeah, I started, well, I, I actually took one of them home, finished that one. I'm on to the next yeah, one. Mark We're going to have more coming. Won the, uh, the 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 battle between us to see who gets to read. And them then first. I started looking up more well, yeah. on Amazon. He's the sword over our and heads. start buying more. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, are no. you gonna Are you gonna buy more? Check out. Oh, for wait. sure. No, oh, that, I can't definitely. wait. But definitely check out the Perhapanauts. Uh, it's it's an awesome series. Dude, the Todd. artwork is amazing, and it's about like cryptids hunting oh, yeah, cryptids. Dude, How can you beat that? It's so fun, dude. Todd uh, Todd Dezago and uh, Craig Russo. Check those guys out. Did I Thank say you. Dezago? Did I fuck it up? Uh, Dezago. No, I think it's I think it's okay. It's yeah, no, no. Dezago. Dezago. Right, I just want to make sure I said it right. Yeah. Also, check out his comic book, or I'm sorry, check out his podcast. Uh, I'm going to bring it up real quick because I've actually been listening to it. I told you I was listening to it you all week. You are very here. excited. It's super cool. It's called, uh, ba, 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 ba. hold on a minute. I'm actually listening to the Walt Simonson episode yeah, right now. Yeah, you called me up super stoked about Walt Simonson, and who wouldn't be? One Random of the greats. Acts of Comics. Check out okay. Random Acts of Comics, a podcast. Do it's it. dope. Moving on, Robert. Yes, thank you again. Gavin Luker. Thank you, Gavin. Ryan Mangan. Yeah, Ryan Mangan. I, I thought it. it was an N at first. I had to bring the glasses right down to the tippy tip of my nose. There he goes. Cinda Ebner. Thank you, Cinda. Ooh. Skyler Stanley. Thank you, Skyler. Snot. Snot. Oh, hell yeah, Snot. Snot. Good name. I like it. Sticky Sounds Zine. Oh, that's so. Well, that's cool. Oh, that it, it feels Sticky rich to say that. I like Sticky it. Sticky Sounds, sounds Zine. zine. Yeah. And I love zines. I don't give a fuck. I love zines. Yeah. No, same here. Yeah. I love them. I, if. if Honestly, if you gave me every well-published magazine and shittily Xeroxed it, I would probably be happier reading it. Though. Oh, yeah. 100%, dude. Last one here, Bob, bringing us home. Last. absolutely, fucking lootly never least, Chelsea Morgan. Thank you, Chelsea. And again, you can check that dude. out and support us monthly at patreon.com slash Podcast. We are out there on the socials of the medias, the Instas, the Twitters, the Facebooks. Living the life. TikTok. We're on the TikToks. We're making we it happen. We're closing in on 700. We are so close to the thousands, so we have the ability to put the link in the bio. Right before it gets canceled. Before, dude, I, yeah. Congress is going to shut this fucker down on the day we have 998. Yeah. And I'm, oh. I'm just going to be like, God damn you, Congress. Dude. You do nothing. You continue to do nothing. You sons of bitch. You can't even get fucking daylight savings right, you motherfuckers. I know, man. There it is. Well, so, whatever. If you got to so ban TikTok, do it. Man, And if you're fine. not in TikTok, uh, sign up just to fucking follow us. A ton of our Patreon yeah. and, and YouTube Two clips, or we, we we put those up on the, on the TikTok, so you can yeah. go check them out there. We got the merch at hellerspace.com T Public. Three recent T shirts added from our crowd made shop. We have the and more to come. We we've got more to come. Yes, but we have uh, recently added there. Uh, we're consolidating the T shirts into one shop because it's just a little bit easier for it just, yes. everybody. Yes, we have the anime Heller Space T shirt. We got the Todd Purse uh, Venezuelan Littlefoots and the OG Frog uh, Loveland Frogmen. So of check course. that out there. And we will have some other T shirt designs 
designs, two that are definitely done I'm coming out soon that are stoked. fucking really cool. We're going to get some test prints of those soon. And over at Crowd, uh, CrowdMade, the CryptonautMerch.com, we are gonna, we are working on some other items there because they do have some drink apparel. Oh. So we'll see how they turn well, out. Well, that wouldn't mm. be. Yeah, uh, that'd actually be pretty cool. Really, so, really well suited to yeah, us. Drink apparel. I don't know. I mean, not clothes you wear while you drink. No. You mean like. Like drinking accessories. Yes. So we're, we're going to check that out. And see Shot glasses? There. Uh, perhaps pint glasses. We'll see. We'll see do what they we have can tumblers? Do. Chris they do. I, I believe. use one. Yes, I do. I do believe that they Tumblers. Have yeah. So we're, we're going to have all that coming in the new year. We're going to check all that stuff out there. Uh, and yes, yeah, so thank you all so very much for your continued support. Tuning in every week. Happy International Podcast Day. Oh, boys. yeah. We Especially did to you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And um, we'll be talking with you soon. So soon. So very soon. Very soon. And you know what? Keep it creepy. Enjoy your October. Yeah, October, man. Live large. Yeah. Fucking crunch some leaves if Do you it. can, if you live in a seasonally appropriate area. Yeah. Do it. You know, we're lucky. I mean, for all the shitbaggery of upstate New York, we definitely get a solid autumn. Even oh, if it yeah. only lasts for two weeks, we're lucky to get it. it winter, is, uh, winter is at our fucking I heels. know. It goes from it's like you. blistering mm-hmm. hot to like icy cold. But you know what? The little sliver we get, I savor with every I mean, ounce yeah, of my being, as yeah, we all do. It's okay. It's so, right. you know, just enjoy it. And you know what? October is a state of mind. Yeah, get it. it, is. it is. And we've got our our movie lists coming out very soon. Yes, our movie lists are going to be coming out. Would have hoped it would have come out in this point in October, but um, but it will come out uh by the next episode at the very uh, latest. Um, are we going to be doing this as a Patreon episode? Possibly? I think we're. I, you know what? I think we should. I think we okay. should do a Patreon episode that is just our. Okay. Sh- I think we should do it as an ancillary one too. I think we should do a Patreon episode and one that's just our movie shit. Okay. Like a bonus one. Like yeah. Bonus, why not? Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. All right, well, yeah. um, good folks at Patreon, keep your eye out for that. And if you want to check that out again, patreon.com slash Kryptonite Podcast. And we're talking to you soon. Oh, <laughs> fuck yeah. Bye. Sibbity Bivens. Bye.